Hello everyone and welcome to First Look, I'm Young John. Now today we're going to look at Rokat's Cone XP, their 15 button gaming mouse, which is super exciting because there's more programmable buttons that you can uh, use when you're playing your favorite game. Let's start with an unboxing and here is what you get in the retail box. Very, very colorful and going out of focus. It has the Cone XP logo up on the upper left hand corner and a nice colorful image right in the middle. It gives you an idea of what the mouse will actually look like when it's lit up. Your system requirements. This works with Windows 7, 8, and 10. You need a USB 2 port and an internet connection to update the driver software. Make sure that it's got the security tape seal and it hasn't been tampered with. It's not open, great. The bottom also is not open, great. So we'll now take our trusty knife So we've got the quick start guide. We've got the extra glide feet. Eh. Ooh, this is pretty. So this is everything that comes in the box. You have your mouse, you have your quick start guide, and you have your extra gliding feet. Now I've taken a look at this quick start guide, just the first page of it, and already you're being told of the 15 buttons and the button assignments. But instead of looking through this piece of paper, we're gonna count it. So count with me here. The original six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's what there normally is. Let's continue. There's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. The wheel button moving laterally. It clicks to the left and it clicks to the right. So that's 15 buttons on top. And on the bottom, you have your PTFE glides. Once you take off the protective plastics, it should glide really smoothly. Take a look at the cable. This thing is it's about six feet long or about two meters. Now they call it Phantom Flex because it's supposed to not snag or tangle. I mean, it's a really soft material. So it's really nice that it doesn't catch on anything. I love the small touches that Rokat thinks about. For example, you have this label of a mouse, a little icon. So if you ever need to unplug it to take with you somewhere, you'll know immediately that this plug is the mouse and not the 12 odd somewhat other plugs and you'll be like hunting around, oh, where is my mouse? It's here, you know? I already know just by looking at this little label. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's plug this guy into our computer and see what we have here. And woohoo! look at this. What? Look at these colors, this is amazing. You know, I was expecting like normal lights, but this is like, it's like looking at heat sinks of a CPU. You see kind of like fins uh, going from top to bottom and the colors are changing from left to right, it looks like. The translucent plastic lets you see inside too. So you're seeing everything, uh, what it's made of. It almost feels like Wonder Woman's invisible plane, you know, you can, you can't see the plane, but you can see the engine. You can see, you know, whatever's inside, like the wheelbase and, you know, the struts and all of that kind of thing. It's, this is really cool. All right, I gotta turn off the lights so I can see this uh, a little bit better. <laughs> wow, look at this. This is called 3D lighting, I think. They have 22 LEDs in here. They also talk about how the scroll wheel lights up really nicely, and it does. I don't know how they got the light in there, but the wheel itself is lit up with the kind of a translucent rubber on top too for grip. We should actually play a game to see what's what with this mouse. And this is called the Last Stand Aftermath. This is kind of a, it's like Diablo <laughs> except with machine guns and modern weapons. Okay, so we have this little character here and we're trying to survive the zombie apocalypse and I'm already feeling like this mouse is glued to my hand. This is really nice. Uh, as you can see from the mouse, it has a nice curvature here. They say it's ergonomically designed and I agree with them. Very cool. Wow. Very nice, very nice, very nice. That's not nice, <laughs> but this is nice. Now I'm saying this is really nice because 
With the semi-automatic weapon, if you hold the mouse button, it does this. And a lot of times, when there's like one zombie, you just want one precise hit, like that. It's not possible all the time with inferior mice, but this one is made with the Titan optical switches. And that is a 0.2 millisecond actuation speed. So the response on this is super quick. Now it's got 100 million click life cycle, and I'm pretty happy with the performance of the micro switches. And actually, these switches operate by light. Wee, 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 wee. Yes. These switches operate by light, so it's not a mechanical switch. I think that's why it's so accurate. Yeah, again, this mouse is super ergonomic. I'm not even grabbing this really tightly and it's just kind of glued to my hand. It doesn't feel like it's gonna slip any day soon. Uh, looking closely at it, actually, you can maybe make out, you know, the there are etches and grooves all along here. And that helps with the grip here. Not only is it ergonomically shaped, but has a nice grip. I'm having a lot of fun with this mouse. <laughs> I was actually pretty frustrated uh, with the previous mouse I was using. It was, you know, misclicking, double clicking, and all that kind of thing. Actually, what I want to do now is exit the game and use these other buttons instead of using the keyboard for the uh, actions. For that, we go to Rocat Swarm. And it already knows that I have the Cone XP installed. Now you can download the XP module now by tapping Auto Updater. I'll go to General, Search Now. So we'll download this and let it do its magic. Now this normally takes a longer time. We're just speeding up the video uh, so you don't have to wait. We've updated the latest version of Swarm and Cone XP drivers. So this is lit because it's connected and these aren't because they're not. Uh, this is the basic interface. If you don't know where to download the software, by the way, or uh, if you want a tutorial on how to use Swarm itself, we will post links in the notes below because we have made some videos on that that you can reference. What we want to do is use all of these buttons in the game. So we're going to customize the button settings. Uh, basically, I made a profile called The Last Stand. I'm going to click on that. And here's the changes that I made. Uh, I made the whole mouse green uh, by going to the illumination setting. I clicked on fully lit and I changed it to this green theme. So whenever it goes into this profile, it'll change to that green. The next part is the most important part, and that's the button assignments. So in the game, I use two buttons quite a lot, and uh, I set it up so that it's closest to my thumb. This bottom button, I set to E, that's to pick up stuff and look at stuff. And the button 13 right above it is R for reload. So those two I'm gonna use the most. I just go weep and whoop, really, really fast. So those are the two most important things. Two minor buttons are this one and this one. Instead of DPI, I set it for switching between weapons and bandages and food and that kind of thing. So primary buttons I use with my thumb, secondary buttons I use with my finger up here. Now here's the really exciting part. You can make it so that this profile starts whenever you start the game automatically. It's called profile auto switch. There's a caveat though. Uh, the profile switcher doesn't seem to work when Swarm is open. You gotta close it. So I'm gonna close and start up the game. Yep. Now watch the mouse as the game starts. It's gonna switch to green. So we know that the profile has switched over. You can add application and select the program that's running, which is, you know, the last stand. Just but I already had it there, so I'm gonna remove that. That's how you get this profile to start up anytime you start up the game automatically. And to switch it back, this is my default profile. You ha I have this one set as the desktop profile. So whenever I leave this game, it automatically switches over 
to profile number one, which is the desktop profile. This is pretty awesome, but you have to do it with Swarm closed. So now let's play the game and you can see how I use these buttons instead of the keyboard. This is a time saver, let me tell you. All right, so my engine needs fixing. How do I do that? I'm gonna press this button <laughs> right on the mouse. I don't need to press E anymore. Reload, great. Reload, great. Reload, yes. And now I'm gonna take a look. I'm not gonna press E, I'm gonna press uh, my mouse button here. See that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That is such a time saver. I love this. Oh my God, I love this. Oh my God, I love this. Oh, ooh, ooh, goodbye. <laughs> ooh, 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 goodbye, ooh. Goodbye. Ooh, ooh, where are you guys coming from anyway? It's just like coming out of nowhere. I've also made it so I run without having to press uh, the shift key on my pinky. I use this middle scroll button instead and it'll kind of run by using, what? The mouse, ha ha, great. The scroll wheel has three clicks, regular click like this and click left and click right. Now I made click right and click left to do things that I really don't use much for. Here's the light on and off and here's crouch on and off. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, you can do so many variations of settings. It's not even funny. This has made gaming life so much easier. Now, you'd think that because it has 15 buttons that you would press these buttons by mistake all the time, but no. Hey, reload. But no, actually, I have not once pressed any of these buttons by mistake. I mean, there's just the right amount of space uh, between the buttons and here. Wee! Wee! There's a perfect amount of space for my thumb between the buttons that I don't press the buttons uh, by mistake. And the buttons aren't placed too far away either. This is just enough that I can just press down or press up. So I don't have to reach over, you know, and press a button. No, it's just tap up, tap down like that. It is so easy. This mouse uses a 19,000, oh no. Ah, boo. Okay, taking damage restores 20% stamina. We'll take that. Right. Well, this mouse uses a 19,000 DPI owl eye sensor. Uh, it's based on the Pixar 3370, which is very well respected in the gaming community. Now, no one in their right minds will use 19,000 DPI. <laughs> At least I don't know anyone who does. Uh, I'm using right now 400 DPI and sometimes 800 and 1200, but that's about it. Uh, but it's there if you want to use it. I don't know anyone who would, but <laughs> it's a highly sensitive mouse, highly sensitive sensor. So that's pretty much the gaming aspect of this mouse, but I wanted to touch on some more of the customization of uh, Rocat Swarm, the software. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have exited the program and it's dutifully gone back to Waves, which is profile number one. So don't forget to use profile auto switch. That's an awesome, awesome feature. So let's be thorough with the settings. In advanced settings, you have stuff like polling rate. It's set at a thousand hertz, but some games don't work with a thousand hertz, which is kind of weird. Uh, so you have to set it for something lower. Illumination is the lighting aspect. Now, the only problem with this section is that you can have so many options that if you're not color uh, coordinated, you're gonna have problems because there's so many different things you can do with the color and lighting. The only new thing here is photon effects and it looks like Tron. It looks like Tron, the movie, <laughs> these colors here. So this is a simulation of what it looks like. And if you wanna take a look on the mouse, you apply and you'll see a change on the mouse. For the color coordinated, let's pick something called fully lit and it lights up the whole thing. You can either select a theme, which is kind of simple like this, or if you're more adventurous, you can do a custom. And now when you go to custom, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. 
uh, for all around the mouse. So if I want the scroll wheel to be red, for example, and I want this DPI wheel to be orange, and then I want to be surrounded by yellow, or maybe a gradient of crazy colors, and I click apply, you're gonna get those crazy colors on your mouse. Red, orange, and the crazy rainbow colors all over the side. Again, if you're not color coordinated, it can look like this. So keep it simple and go to wave, <laughs> apply, and just leave it as it is. We're gonna go to settings. Now in this section, the DPI switcher is the most important part in my opinion. Now you can have up to five options. Uh, I only use about three, 400, 800, and 1200. You can select the DPI up and down by using these two buttons here. So this is DPI up and this is DPI down. Now finally, we have button assignment. Now this is the default. While I didn't change any of the settings, you don't even have to install Swarm to have a lot of fun with this. So let me illustrate. You have a file explorer. Scroll wheel down is going down. Scroll wheel up is going up. But if you hold down Easy Shift, you'll notice that the whole mouse turns blue. To signify it's Easy Shift, if you go up, look in the upper left, my master volume is controlled by Easy Shifting and Scroll Wheel Up, Scroll Wheel Down. And then if you let Easy Shift go, you go up and down over here. And if you're not sure what it does, it shows you here. So this is six and seven, right? The scroll wheel. Six and seven is volume up and volume down. You can always change it to something else. You know, in multimedia, you have mute master volume, next track, previous track, a whole bunch of things. Now the defaults are DPI up and down, these two buttons up here, as you can see, eight and nine. You can go browser forward and browser backward in button 10 and 11. Those are these two buttons up there. 14 is easy shift, this button here. And 15 is profile cycle. It'll cycle through these different profiles. However, I like to use DPI settings. So if you want to change this to DPI, click on it and you have to search for it. There's advanced settings and there's DPI cycle. So now when you click apply, uh, go to settings, you can change, this goes through DPIs as you can see, instead of going through profiles. Otherwise, Easy Shift controls the media player. Once you open it up, you can play it by holding Easy Shift and play, like that. And if I go left, it'll go previous, previous, right is next, right is next, this is using, uh, making use of the lateral buttons. I love this, this is really, really cool. And pause, play. And all the time you can see that this is blue. I'm holding the uh, easy shift button down. There we go. And if I'm not pressing easy shift, if I go left, it goes backwards and forwards on the selected song. So it's just to say, if you don't install Swarm and you're a big movie watcher, you can do a lot of the controls just using this easy shift button. That's pretty much the basics of customization. This mouse is great for games and it's great for media. You know, I'm struggling to find anything wrong with this mouse. Uh, okay, the lone exception is the heat. It gets pretty warm and my palms started to sweat up because there aren't any vents or holes to allow the heat to escape for the 22 LED lights. So, you know, maybe for the future, uh, the Rocat engineers can think of a ways to dissipate heat better. Uh, the only other thing is the uh, protective plastic on the bottom. I had to go get a sewing needle to try and, you know, pull away the plastic from uh, around the sensor. It's impossible to pull away. And uh, maybe if there was a tab or something that would help us kind of pull it, that would be a nice touch. One thing I do want to call Rokit out on is the, the mention of 29 programmable functions. Physically, you can't push the easy shift and four of these buttons at the same time. That's impossible unless you reach over with your other hand and, you know, try to do one of these things. <laughs> but it's not usable that way. So instead of saying 29 programmable, even if it is technically, uh, you can't really utilize it. So uh, maybe you could just say it's 24 usable programmable buttons. That would be a lot more fair to say. Let's conclude this video by giving this mouse a rating with the two thumbs that I do have built in me and say that I give this guy two enthusiastic thumbs up. It strikes an excellent balance between usability and features. And I love the number of buttons that they do have here. Uh, which never got in the way of the usability of it. 
So if you happen to be on the market for a gaming mouse with more than six buttons, the Rocat Cone XP is something you definitely want to take a look at. Highly, highly recommended. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you want to check out prices, we shall leave Amazon affiliate links down below in the notes. And if you haven't yet, please take a moment now to register to register. Please take a moment now to subscribe to the First Look, Look With Two Zeros YouTube channel. We'll see you all again next time.